a beautiful thing. It's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be here at Regent Park. Finally, the diversity within this community is just phenomenal. You know, just to see people from various regions of the world coexisting with one another. That always fascinated me. That's always been a part of my work to just show diversity. So I'm here to just share the little bit of knowledge I've gained over the course of time with young students, both uh, students involved with this particular project here, and even kids within the community, if they have aspirations of being a photographer. So I just wanted to share my insight with them. I was very fortunate to publish a couple of books, and I just want to give them an option in terms of uh, career objectives, and maybe you might want to be a photographer. So I'm here to just share the little bit of knowledge I have along with Shay and, and, and everyone else. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, how long have you been doing this? Wow, I started back in 1975, you know, so I've been doing it for, you know, well over 30 years right now, and it's been a, a life-changing experience for me, you know. When I picked up the camera at 15, and uh, I haven't dropped it since. I think for me, growing up in Brooklyn back in the days, it was just a, the flavor and, and the beauty that I was surrounded by often. And to see it was one thing, but to have an, the ability to capture it with a camera just took it to a whole new level. And once I started photographing my peers, I realized the magic that it had to make people feel good. Because it was beyond just taking the photograph, it was complimenting the people in which I approached. So it gave me an opportunity to tell people they were beautiful and special. And when I saw, you know, how, how smiles resonated off that statement, it really encouraged me to move forward and just not only take photographs, but encourage people at the same time. I wasn't sure what I wanted to be when I was younger, but I at least had a camera with me. And it didn't take till like maybe 15 years later that I realized that this is what I want to do. But the key thing I tell everybody, not only uh, those that might want to be photographers, but people in general, carry a camera with you every day. Document your, your life, document your family, and just retain a visual diary, you know, for your own person. These are some of the very first pictures I took when I was just 15 years old. You know, with a basic cheap camera that I borrowed from my mother. And these are my friends in high school that I documented. So by doing these books here, I'm able to give, this, you know, have, have the people I photograph have these images for themselves and for their children. As an older person, I'm trying to give back to the community. So I am a photographer, I worked in law enforcement, and I just try to, to, to just talk to people about hope because I know also when I was falling in cracks, older people approached me and we had this philosophy, each one was teach one. So when I was given the knowledge by some of the elders, they always said, go back to your community, get back. And I found that doing it verbally was one thing, but as a photographer, you just take it to a whole new level where I can say I'm a photographer. These are some of my images here. Just to show young people photographs like this here and tell stories about these images, you got guys open. So if you can go into your house and shoot outside the window that you see, and this is like my region park. When you wake up in the morning, you want to look at what type, what type of day it is, look out your window. So to go within your home, if you can, and shoot out your window. Can y'all guys do that for me? Yeah. All right. The people thing was always an exchange. And I've learned from so many people. I mean, from gang bangers, people that, you know, uh, that were considered uh, outcasts in society. I found them most compelling. I started talking to prostitutes in the very beginning. And that really moved me because oftentimes people see prostitutes in one light. I started to hang out with them and I saw the innocence, I saw the beauty, I saw the pain. And it just really opened me up to just listen and learn from them and not judge them. And even with the gang bangers today, oftentimes we see them and we judge them not realizing what they've gone through in life that caused them to be on that particular path. So I learned from them and, and they learn from me, and then we kind of like work, walk on the path together. I would like text to be involved in some of the projects too. It doesn't have to be for all of them, but whoever's poetic or who can make a statement. But, and what I like to do also is give captions to some of your photographs. So as you shoot, come up in the mind like, what can I call this particular shot? Like if you're gonna shoot the store merchants, what would you call it? There's another idea I just gotta cheat a little bit. Oh boy, do it, it. The pets of Regent Park. How many of you guys, the, the, the dogs, the cats, the birds, to shoot the pets of Regent Park would be good. The babies, the elders. And this is an education that you're not gonna really get in school. So I have to be hands on. And some of my greatest teachers have been people on the street. And I look at many of them as being angels too, because I met so many wise people in my travels that they, they impart knowledge on me. And I said, wow, that person was an angel. So it, it's really enhanced my ability to grow and just see life very differently. So what would it take for a, uh, for a young photographer to learn about digital photography? I suggest that young photographers, you know, uh, go to the bookstores and, and, and check out some of the works with different photographers. I mean, because there's various levels of photography. There's fashion, there's documentary work. Find out what it is you want to do. The key thing is to get a camera. 
Both of these books basically represent my upbringing coming up in the streets of Brooklyn, New York back in the days. And they are like a visual diary of my life. And I was able to achieve these images because I carried my camera every single day with me. Every single day. Rain, snow, cold, it was with me. So in doing so, it allowed me to capture these great images. So I tell people getting started, if you photograph your friends and family, then put, put those images in a portfolio and carry that work with you so you, when you approach people, you show that you are sincere. Because it's, it's interesting, the challenges that I encountered over time, which, which kind of like amazed me, people would say, what do you want to do with my picture? Do you want to put it on the internet? Or uh, do you have film in your camera? It's like, come on, how could people want to walk around with a camera with no film? But I found that people use the camera as a form of manipulation, exploitation, and I can't do that. I have to be sincere. And oftentimes, when you take the opportunity to speak to your subjects, they listen to you. Some might even say no, but I still respect you, and more maybe at another time. So this is a process. So it, it, it's, it's hard to really explain it to people. But I also tell subjects, too, that there's a flip side of photography. And I created a series called The Other Side. And rather than shooting people from the front, I shoot them from the back. Why do you shoot people at not the buildings? You know, a building is, has its beauty within it, but when I, when I engage a person, I get to, to, to learn about that individual. You know, I, I, I get an opportunity to encourage them and gain knowledge at the same time. And it's just a joy, it's a challenge too. A building is not really challenging to me. When you confront a complete stranger and you approach them, it's kind of difficult. Is, would anyone here be willing to take that, that, that uh, task to shoot all the store merchants? To go in every store and shoot the store merchants in front of the store? Anybody? Yeah. You accept that challenge? Yeah. All right, you guys? Yeah. So you are tasked to do that then. That's one of the projects right there. Every store merchant. So with that idea in mind, there's just two ways that you can shoot that thing. You can shoot them in the store or outside the store. But I want every store merchant to be captured. So what you have to think about now, how will I approach them and say to them, I'm going to take a picture. You have to think about what questions can, what statement can you make to them to convince them to want to take that photograph? And then how will you shoot that photograph? Is it a husband and wife? Is it children when you shoot everybody close up? So you have to visualize that particular scenario But every store merchant. Now, if it's raining outside, it's great because you get a chance to shoot them inside. And if you want to shoot something that represents this, this store, they might have an item like the first dollar they got when they open up the store. Shoot them with that and now tell the story. Find out their names. What do you feel about the threat of the digital photography re replacing films? My thing really is just to be in a position to record the history, regardless. If you could just record the history. It's not necessarily the camera that you use, but it's the vision that you have. Just record it. Rather you have digital, film, just, just shoot and just document the time. That's just how I feel about it. I'm not one to sit down and, and argue the point which is better. My whole thing is just record the moments because I've seen incredible shots done with digital cameras. And uh, I'm happy with it both. You know, with, with, with either one, it doesn't make a difference. Just shoot, record the moment by all means. You know, even with the cell phone cameras, I'm amazed with what's being done. It may not be high-end images, but nevertheless, you're able to capture the moment with that camera and just do it. Whatever it takes for you to do to record the moment, just get out there and do it. If you can get a disposable camera and capture something you need, just make it happen. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, this is Region Park Focus Live. I'm here with the best photographer right here. And it was it was great great having you. And Fahim, it was a great pleasure speaking to you. And I'll say to everybody, each one must teach one. You know, let, let's take the opportunity and mentor young people within our community. We all have the power and the resources. Rather, you're a photographer, you're a chess player, you know, you you, you are a, a, a mathematician. We have gifts that were given to us. Let's give it back to the community. And you never know how far it goes. You plant a seed, you grow a flower. Exactly. And um, there you have it. Watch us uh, next time. RPTV was brought to you by the Regent Park Focus New Media Arts Center.